morning, beautiful friends. I hope you're all doing incredibly well. I wanted to hop on and start a new vlog because it is just the most beautiful fall I think I've ever seen in my life. So I'm currently reading If We Were Villains at the moment, which I'm really enjoying so far. There's a few things that annoy me, but I figured I would bring you along on finishing that out and then show you some of the fall views that we've been having. I'm about to show you our backyard and it is breathtaking and I'm just like feeling so thankful today. Sorry, my dogs are crying in the background. We are gonna do some bathroom updates today. We're gonna go out to breakfast and hang out. I think we're gonna work on some stuff in our backyard and go see my brother. So I'm just gonna be showing you some B-roll clips of stuff that we get up to today. And then, like I said, just kind of bring you along on finishing my current read, so. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he wants to go out so bad. But he was literally just outside, so don't worry, he's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I figured I would, once again, just bring you along and show you how beautiful Minnesota is in the fall time. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I think that fall is the best season in the whole world. You can disagree, that's fine, you can be wrong, but it is. We just had such a good day yesterday. I'm so glad we got to play with our boys in the morning for a while. We went out to breakfast, got ugly pumpkins, finished a house project. Like it was just so good. And then we went out last night to visit my brother. He just moved in with some new roommates and I've actually known one of his roommates since he was like nine. So that was really fun. But yeah, it was just, it was a good night. Um, we did have kind of a traumatic event last night. Well. I had a traumatic event last night. Steven handled it like a champ. I was freaking out. <laughs> this might gross some people out, so I'm sorry, but 
we got home and we were, you know, like, let's take a shower and go to bed. And Steven took off his shirt and there was a tick in his chest. And I freaked out. We tried very unsuccessfully to get the entire thing out. I spent over an hour like trying to get it and Steven was like in pain and it was just such a traumatic horrible event. He handled it like a, like a champ. I mean he's a superhero. It was fine but I was like getting so frustrated and upset. So yeah that was a traumatic event last night unfortunately. Thankfully the entire day was great aside from that but that just like freaked me out and I hated every second of it. <laughs> So because of that, I didn't get to bed until like 2.30 this morning. So I was intending on starting this this morning at like 9 a.m. But it's now like almost 1 o'clock. So, but I also got into like a major cleaning frenzy this morning. Like I woke up and I was like, I need to clean. So like I showered, cut my hair, which there was also another traumatic event with that. But we're not going to talk about it. And I got ready and I just like deep cleaned my bathroom. I, since we've, since we put up those shelves yesterday, I like organized all the shelves. I wiped off the counters. I I just deep cleaned. But I wanted to hop, ugh, wanted to hop on here and show some exciting stuff. I just got a package in the mail, which I was not expecting until like Monday or Tuesday. So this is very exciting stuff. And then I wanted to give you guys an update on my book. And then I wanted to show you actually really quick. Last night, my brother gave me my books that I've been looking for for like eight years. I don't know where they went and then he revealed to me recently, oh I've had those. <laughs> so he gave them back to me last night and I was very excited and that is the Bone graphic novels. I have never read graphic novels aside from these and I think I only ever read the first one maybe. I don't even think I finished it but I loved the artwork so much that I got the rest of them. <laughs> I got these at a scholastic book fair when I was in like middle school. My mom loved that I loved them even though I didn't even like finish the first one and she got me the rest of them. Um, there's a lot more actually now. I only have five of them because I'm missing the third one. I don't know if I just never got it or if my brother lost it. This one is the first one. Then I got the second one. I think that's so funny. And I got the fourth one so I'm missing the third. Here's the fourth fifth and the sixth so I don't even remember a whole lot about them I believe that there are three main characters who are like the bone after being run out of boneville the three bone cousins phone bone phony bone and smiley bone are separated and lost in a vast uncharted desert one by one they find their way into a deep forested valley filled with wonderful and terrifying creatures Eventually, the cousins are reunited at a farmstead run by tough Grandma Ben and her spirited granddaughter, Thorn. But little do the bones know, there are dark forces conspiring against them and their adventures are only just beginning. But I just remember this being so fun and funny and I loved the artwork so much. I think, like, the, the evil creatures in them look so, like, I don't know, just so classic cartoony. And I remember in one of the books, because maybe I did read them all, I honestly cannot even remember. There's some kind of like aphid bug in here that's just ginormous and hilarious and adorable. And there's dragons and it's just, yeah, I don't know. If you've never read graphic novels and you kind of want to try them, oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah, I did not read the entire things because I just found my bookmark. Which is a Dora Explorer tag. I don't know what I got, but I got it for $5 at Walmart. <laughs> so, apparently I only made it to page 20. I was not much of a reader back in the day, apparently. This is exactly the part I was just thinking of, like the giant aphid bug. Oh my gosh, that's so funny that I remember that and that just happens to be where I read to. But yeah, so I am very excited that I have these back. I've never done a 24 hour readathon before and I know that a lot of people usually do like graphic novels with those so they can get more books in that. So I kind of want to try that with these. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm excited that I have them. And then I will do my quick update and then I'll get to my package that I'm so excited about. Okay. So like I said, I'm reading If We Were Villains. If you don't know what this is about, it's about seven college students who are offend offending, who are attending Delacher, Delacher, 
Delache, I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's Delacher, but it's basically like an acting school and they're all very different. One of them ends up getting murdered and you kind of have to figure out who it is. It starts out with the perspective of one of them being in prison who was arrested for the crime. And now, mind you, I got 50 pages into this and I was like, I'm loving this. Like it's based in the fall. It's dark academia kind of and I'm just, I love the writing so much. And so I looked in the back to like check to see if the author had more work. Cause you know, typically if you go to like this very back page, there's usually the very last page says like more about the author. Nope, there is a list of questions. Basically gave it, aw gave it away. One of the questions was like, what did you think about so-and-so mur murdering so-and-so? And I was like, are you kidding me? Why would you put that in the back of the book like that? I was so, oh, I was so mad. So I got 50 pages into a book I was really enjoying and then spoiled it for myself. Like maybe I should have known better, but to me, like that makes no sense to put that there. So it is taking me a little bit longer now because now I'm like, okay, well now I know who did it. So I'm not like racing to finish it. But yeah, so that was really disappointing. I am still really liking the story and the writing though. I am on page 224. So I've made a really decent sized dent in it so far. I do really love the writing. There's lots of great, like, I don't know, just the way that she explains things is really good. And there's a lot of Shakespearean quotes, so it's kind of easy to kind of like, not skim over it, but just kind of like, okay, like, kind of skim over it, I guess. The characters are all like unique. I appreciate that we're getting to know each of them because if you've been here all, you know, I'm very character driven. I love being able to get to know individual characters. I will say I'm kind of disappointed with the Dark Academia vibes. Like literally the only thing Dark Academia about this is that they're at an old building in the, this college in the fall. That's it. Like I'm not getting any kind of like studying in the candlelight, like none they have there's no like physical descriptions of the students themselves so like i want to hear about like the outfits and stuff i don't know i'm so visually driven i guess like i want to hear about the dark academia setting and the outfits and the mood and i just i feel like the only dark academia thing we're getting is that it's fall and it's at an old school that's made of like brick so I wish there was more of that. There's one other thing that's really bothering me that I'm not gonna mention until the end. Overall, I am really liking it. It's giving like three and a half star vibes. Anyway, I got a very exciting package. I'm like, I'm so excited. <laughs> Somebody reached out to me on Instagram and asked if they could send me some stuff from their shop and I said absolutely. It's called Fable Wood Goods. I'll link it down in the description box. She was so kind and she sent me like a whole bundle, not even just one thing. I thought she was just gonna send me like one thing, like pick one thing from my shop. No, she let me pick like a whole bundle of stuff. So I'm like so grateful and so excited about this. I haven't looked at it yet, obviously. I did open up the package and like smell hit me in the face because one of the products is a candle. So I'm so excited, it smells so good. Oh, oh I'm so excited. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, so the first thing is this coffee. Oh, I'm so excited. And I think it's, yes, it's whole beans, so I'll be able to grind it fresh, which it, it's the best. If you haven't done that, it tastes so much better than regular ground coffee. It is Hedgewitch Hollow Bewitched Brew Coffee, whole bean, medium roast with floral and herbal notes, and a creamy caramel finish. Like, how delicious does that sound? I'm so excited about this. I'm definitely gonna... Make some tomorrow. I don't know if I should make any right now since it's like one o'clock, but I'm so excited about it. Oh my goodness. The next thing, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Look at that. Pretty little mushrooms on it. They look like Amanita muscarias. Oh wow. It's so pretty. She designs these all on her iPad, I believe. And then this is what I've been smelling. Herbs entwined rosemary, sage, and cedarwood. Oh my gosh, it already smells fantastic. Oh my goodness, this is probably the best smelling candle I've ever smelled in my life. The cedarwood smells, hey <laughs> cutie. The cedarwood smells more like, um, like a pine. 
but I'm absolutely obsessed with it either way. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. This is, okay, this is one of the things I'm most excited about. Okay, I can't even say that. I'm excited about all of this. What the heck? Oh my gosh, this is so stunning. I can't believe she sent me all of this. Are you ready? Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? The little mushrooms all over it and it's my favorite thing. It's got like the textured paper on it and it's got the rough edges. Oh, this is so beautiful. I can write my letters in here or I can even do watercolor. I might try my watercolor in here because that is one thing that I really want to try getting into again. I'm not very good at it, but it's fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending this to me. And I think this might be the last thing in here. I think these are going to be little bookmarks. Yes. They're little magnetic bookmarks. I got the toad with the pumpkins. How fun is that? Then I got the little mushies. And the little toad. Look at how cute he is, those little fat belly. Oh, these are so nice. And they're little magnetic ones, so you put these on the page. And they close like that. Oh, this is so sweet. Wow. Thank you so much for sending all of this to me. I'm so excited about all of this. So, like I said, I will link the shop down below so you guys can shop because you're going to want some of this stuff. It's all just amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, okay, so now that that's <laughs> all done, I'm... I want to use some of this today for sure, but I only have a few more hours now until Steven gets home from work. He gets off at five and like I said, it's about, about one. I have a Bible study to do. I need, I want to do my nails and I need to eat and I'm going to read. So I've got four things that I want to get done and I also actually have to start editing my Apple Fest vlog. So I've got five things that I want to get accomplished today. I think I can do it for sure eating. <laughs> Bible study and I'm gonna do my nails. I think I'm gonna turn on like Gilmore Girls or something and do that Oh, and then I have to bake cookies because we're going to a bonfire tonight again at my brother and his roommates place So I'm gonna make peanut butter cookies, which I made this recipe and I'm so pumped that I actually did something like that So yeah, anyway, I'll be sharing all that later today, too. So I will catch up with you in a little bit Gosh, my voice almost didn't work. <laughs> uh, it is Sunday morning and I'm, well actually no, it's 12.30, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm riding the Hot Mess Express today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just finished church about half an hour ago and it was lovely. 
so good. I'm so grateful that we found a good church that actually like speaks truth. I pretty much put like my entire to-do list for the weekend into yesterday with all the cleaning that I did that I was not expecting to do yesterday. And then I ended up totally rushing uh, my nails. So they're not perfect, but they are cute. I ended up brushing that. I ended up brushing the peanut butter cookies because when Steven got home, he was like chomping at the bit to get to my brother's place. So I just made the dough here and then we baked them when we got there. But yeah, basically I just wanted to say that since I got like most of the stuff done yesterday that I wanted to do, aside from writing some letters, I pretty much have today open. So I think I'm just gonna read. I'm gonna try to read for most of the day. I, like I said, because I kind of spoiled the like twist of this book, I kind of have a hard time staying totally focused now because I'm like, oh, I know what happens. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, we'll see. I'm gonna try my hardest to just focus and get it done. So because my next read, I am so, so excited about because here we go again, mentioning Megan, <laughs> Ginger, Ginger Hobbit, Ginger Hobbit on Instagram. I'm reading one of her favorite books next again, because her favorite book is The Hobbit, but then like one of her other favorite books ever is A Far Wilder Magic. And that's what I decided I'm going to read next. It was between that and The Poison Thread, which is kind of like a Victorian Gothic, which I love that style and that vibe. So I was thinking about doing that, but then I remembered that A Far Wilder Magic was on my list and I was like, nope, doing that one. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that will be enough to motivate me to get through this book. So we'll see. And we also have like quite a few house things that we want to get accomplished over the next couple months. Kind of random, but I just realized that you can see like a stack of books right there and a bag of M&Ms and then like more books right here and then all my books over there. Steven is planning on building me bookshelves um, over there. I'm not going to show you. Yeah, that was kind of a random update for things we plan on doing. <laughs> um, in other news, I tried the coffee that Fablewood Goods, Fable, Fablewood Goods sent me. <laughs> And I absolutely love it. This coffee is so delicious. Oh my goodness. And this mug is just too stinking cute. Love it so much. And I did put it on the screen, I believe, but she messaged me last night after I'd already filmed everything that she was giving me a discount code for you guys. So that was super sweet. Honey 10, if you're interested in anything. And she actually gave me like a custom link. So I can just put that down below for you guys to click on directly. She said it should just automatically apply my discount. So that was really nice. I'm so excited about it. And she kind of shared some like sneak peek arts for some of her upcoming collections. I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful that she reached out to me. Also that blanket, I'm almost done crocheting it. I'm, it's like long enough to cover me from shoulder to toes, but I want to make sure that it's like extra cozy. So I have a few more rows that I need to do, but anyway. So yes, I think I'm just going to try to read for as long as I'm able to hold my focus for a while. Next time I see you, I will be giving an update on the book and then closing this out. So I will see you in just a minute.
so it is Wednesday. It's been a couple days. I definitely got distracted. So, <laughs> but I did finish it last night. So I'm going to talk about that in just a second after I show you my exciting mail that I had recently mentioned. I finally got the collector's edition of The Cruel Prince in the mail yesterday that I pre-ordered back in like July. And like I've said a million times, I still have not read the series. I'm going to read it in the spring though, I decided. And I'm so excited and this special edition is just stunning. Look at how pretty that is. And the spine is beautiful and the back stunning and then when you take it out oh my goodness it has a beautiful velvet cover with these gorgeous details this title and then the crown gosh it is just one of the most beautiful books I have ever seen. This edition is just, it's everything. It's beautiful. And then when you open it, you do have some art, Cardin and Jude, and then as well in the back. But I am just so excited to read this series and like I said, the special edition is just probably the most beautiful book I own now and I'm obsessed with it. I'm definitely a collector's edition bookish girly for sure. So yeah, that's exciting. I love it so much. So moving on, it is going to be very difficult to give my final thoughts and review without giving spoilers so i'm not going to give any spoilers but my review might sound kind of vague because i don't want to give anything away so i'm sorry if it sounds kind of weird but yeah i did finish this last night and i gave it two stars <laughs> which is a bummer because when i initially started reading it i was like this is giving like at least four star vibes like i am loving it so far and i did for probably the first third of the book, I loved it. I thought it was wonderful. The writing was great. The setting was so atmospheric at first. Um, based in the 90s, you know, totally my vibe. It's It was marketed as like a dark academia book. And I can tell you right now that it, it did not give me any vibes like that after like the introduction, which kind of sucked. <laughs> So I'm just going to tell you what I loved and then what I didn't because I feel like that's the easiest way to do this. So what I loved is, like I said, the first third of the book, I think that the characters were introduced pretty well. The environment was built okay. I kind of had a hard time imagining the school because, like I said, they are at university. And the dynamic between the students and the teachers was set up really great. So I was like, okay, this is going really well. I like this. And then, it, it, I don't know, after like a third, it just stopped being good. <laughs> there were a lot of great one-liners throughout the book, so I did like underline quite a few things, but other than those two things, I kind of like, I kind of low-key hated this book. <laughs> so number one, like, we get it. You're Shakespeare students, like you're living for the theater, but the amount of times that they quote Shakespeare in this book is outrageous. Like, I would say it, probably a quarter of this book is just Shakespeare quotes. Like it's, it's ridiculous. I could open any like random page and there's Shakespeare on it. Like there's five quotes of Shakespeare. Okay, not five. There's three quotes of Shakespeare on that page. Another quote from Shakespeare open to another random page. Oh, we got lucky. We got a page that didn't have any, but it's just, it's crazy to me how often they would quote it because they weren't just quoting it in like group settings or practicing their lines it was like constantly they would be having conversations and they would just like quote Shakespeare in these conversations like at first it was like oh that's kind of quirky and cool you know Shakespeare students and then after the first like 50 times I was like okay <laughs> okay the next thing is that so I had mentioned that I kind of spoiled it for myself after like 50 pages and at first I was like, okay, now I'm really mad. This is going to take me forever to get through it because I have nothing to like read for. But looking back on it, I'm like, there's no way you wouldn't guess who did it. Like there's no way. There's not nothing at all ever even remotely hints that somebody else could have done it except for this person. So that like 
as far as the mystery goes, zero out of five stars. Like, it was just, yeah, you, you, you know who did it. Like, come on. So like I was saying before, the Dark Academia vibes, it was kind of there in the very beginning when she explained, well, I guess another thing that bothered me is that it's written from a, like a man's point of view, but you can very clearly to me tell that it was written by a woman. So anyway, so as Oliver is like explaining to us the whole setting and everything, it kind of felt Dark Academia at first because I'm like, okay, they're at this old, old school in the 90s in the fall. That's like Dark Academia, right? But I was expecting like more <laughs> like I was hoping that it would be a little more atmospheric when they're like studying or practicing lines or like going out to whatever and do what I, I don't know I was just expecting more I don't know I was expecting more vibes I guess <laughs> Oliver's family dynamic that was brought up totally unnecessary didn't need to be in the story at all okay so the romances because there are two romances that happen in this book I hated it I hated it so much. <laughs> so without giving spoilers, this is the part where it might be kind of like, oh, it's kind of weird to explain, but like, so there's two romances, okay? One of them I actually really liked and the other one I absolutely hated. <laughs> so if you've read this, you're just gonna have to kind of guess which one I'm talking about, but if you read this, feel free to message me on Instagram and we can talk about this because I hated it so much. The one there, it was hinted at so much throughout the book and it was like, annoyingly so hinted at like it wasn't like a slow burn I don't know it's hard to explain it without overall the one that was being hinted at so much it made Oliver seem so pathetic it made him seem like just a sad little puppy following this person around and it was just really annoying. And I don't understand why it was that person that was supposed to be the main love interest because they had absolutely zero chemistry. There was no emotional attachment. Like it was, I like that person because they're cool and they're talented and they're confident. But then like everything that happened between Oliver and that character, it was so just average communication. And then the other romance that happened, I was rooting for this romance so hard because they, they had a lot of vulnerable moments. There was a lot of emotional moments. There was romance. There was intimacy. There was like, there was chemistry. And it could have been so beautiful and redemptive for both of them. And I was cheering on this romance so hard. So like any time that other one was like hinted at, I'm like, oh my gosh, stop. Because like, you don't have any chemistry with that person. I don't, I don't know why Oliver liked that person. I just don't get it. Plus, I feel like the other romance that I was rooting for would have made the ending so much more interesting had that been the main romance focused on throughout the book because of the ties that that person had to the one who was murdered. So like, I feel like that one could have just been so much more dynamic, I guess is the word that you could use. And I feel like the romance that I hated so much is why this book is so popular. People loved it. They thought it was wonderful and like achingly beautiful and I just don't get it. I just, I, I don't know. And we all can have our own opinions, okay? Don't come at me like, yo, you missed the point. No, I didn't. Like, I didn't think it was beautiful at all. I think the other romance that he had was far more meaningful and they had more conversations and they got more vulnerable with each other and that is what was nice to read about. <laughs> then the ending, the ending really, really, really upset me. I don't know if this is a spoiler or not because people have talked about it before but like the ending is just it leaves it up to the imagination which really really bothers me i hate books like that they're just not my cup of tea so when i read that i wanted to throw the book across the room i was so mad i was like are you kidding me um <laughs> And I didn't think it was romantic because some people read that and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so romantic that, cause there are interpretations of like, okay, gosh, and I can't even say it without giving spoilers. But some people think it's romantic because, oh, there could still be a happy ending then. And I'm like, that's not romantic. The, 
No, it's not. The dude sat in prison alone for years. And that's supposed to be romantic. Like, I just, I don't get it. Don't get it. So really, my ending comment that I'll give is that Meredith was the true victim of this book. Like, fully, 100%, that's what I believe because... She went through that awful tragedy and then she is being viewed one way and I loved one of the quotes that she said in the book when she had mentioned like once you start, and I apologize for the language, but she said when you treat a woman like a whore, she's likely to act like a whore. And my heart broke for her because I don't think that's who Meredith truly is, but because people only see her for her body and her physical beauty that she can bring into that world. I felt like she missed her value in so much when she was obviously clearly very talented even just making it in to four years at the school which was a big deal. Her heart was being messed with the entire book and I just felt so badly for her and then at the very end of course it's like great now she's gonna go through another heartbreak and it's just it was horrible and I hated it and I felt so bad for her. I thought I liked a few characters there are a few that I was like oh I like you and then the end came and I was like I don't like you <laughs> so yeah I don't know overall I just I really did not enjoy this book at all well I can't even say that I enjoyed the first third of the book and then the rest of it sucked and I hated it so yeah that's my hot take I know this is a very unpopular opinion I did check Goodreads and there were a few people who actually had like the same opinions as I did which made me feel less alone but yeah, it's sad because I had high hopes for this one, but it is what it is, I guess. If you've read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, message me on Instagram if you want to talk about, like, things that would be spoilers. So, yeah, overall, didn't like it, but that's okay. Had a great fall week and had a great time otherwise. So, yeah, my next read, I think, is going to be A Far Wilder Magic or The Only One Left by Riley Sager. So, we shall see. But, yeah, I've been rambling for a hot minute. That's my review. I hope you had a lovely time watching my video. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so dearly and I will see you in the next one. Bye!